I got a, a, a short night when it came to uh, sleep last night. I'll explain that in just a couple of minutes, explain why. And normally I'm, I'm in bed by oh, between 7 and 8 o'clock. I was up a little bit later last night. We'll talk about why in, in a second, as I say. A couple of other things we have coming up this morning, though. First of all, better health with Trip Family Medicine between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning. If you have a comment or question for the doctor, please feel free to give us a call at 736-0300. And in the, in the next hour, if I have an opportunity, I'd like to tell you a story that I, I picked up from one of my coworkers yesterday. Apparently, there is someone in one of our neighboring communities looking to poison dogs and cats in the neighborhood by putting out a jars filled with peanut butter and poison and crackers covered in poison. And uh, some details about that coming up in, a, in, a, in perhaps the next hour on the program when we get through some of the other business. I happened to be at Eastside Southern Baptist Church last night on Eastland, uh, Eastland Drive North here in Twin Falls. And I thought, you know, I'll go over there and I'll find a seat. Pastor Sharam Hadian was speaking, and of course, he was on the air with us last Friday. This was one of two public events that he was holding here in the region. He had a, a speech, an engagement originally on Monday night in Filer, and then followed it up at the church here in Twin Falls last night. And I thought, well, I'll leave the house about 20 minutes of 7 o'clock. I'll have plenty of time. I don't live more than a few blocks away. I'll leave and I'll drive over there and, you know, uh, I'll find a parking spot and I'll be in business. Now, they had 135 people show up for the event in Filer on Monday night. And I thought, well, they'll see probably about the same type of turnout on Tuesday night here in Twin Falls. And I got there, and I may have found the last parking space in the actual church parking lot, which was packed. And probably getting out of there was not easy for some people last night, just with the unusual configuration. There's a new parking lot. The lines are not yet painted on it, and that was a challenge for some people. And in some of the neighborhoods, I could see this as well, in some of the surrounding neighborhoods, people were parked up and down the sides of the streets. And then in the parking lots, going all the way down to Addison Avenue of some of the closed businesses, those parking lots were filled as well. When I got inside, they were actually unfolding chairs in the sanctuary because they'd run out of seats. Then they started unfolding chairs, these, 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 these uh, folding chairs, they started unfolding them out in the lobby area <laughs> because... They had run out of seats inside the sanctuary, so they had about eight rows of seats in that back area as well, and I was trying to get a crowd estimate. I don't know how many people are normally seated inside uh, the sanctuary area. I'm told that the the church has a, a steady congregation of about 90 people. Now, there were people who were lined up against the back wall and people who were sitting in the area where they control the uh, the sound system and the video system that they use on the walls. I'm telling you right now, uh, somebody came up to me at one point after we had initial projection that there must have been 250 people in the main sanctuary. Somebody came along afterward because dozens of people were just streaming through the doors even after the event formally got started. And I was told there may have been 400 people who happened to be uh, perhaps just in the sanctuary alone, and then you had the people who were sitting out in the lobby. And they came to hear the remarks of this man because... If you have not joined us over the last several days, I, I had a couple of people say to me on Facebook, you know, I had no idea he was here. I wish I could have gone. Well, he, he's been covered in the newspaper. Maybe that's why you didn't know about it. I mean, who, after all, is paying much attention to that any longer? He was on television not only in Twin Falls, but in Boise, Boise as well after his appearance Monday night. And then we've talked about it on the radio. He was a guest of ours on the radio Friday morning for about 20 minutes. So this has not been something that has gone uh, under the radar in the area. But I do understand people get busy sometimes. You have maybe people coming in for the weekend or you're out of town for the weekend and things just can fall through the cracks. But if we had that many people there last night, plus you add in how many came out to see him in Filer, then you had in excess of 500 people at two locations. And, and again, for a lot of people, this may have been on very short notice. They may have heard him on the air here Friday and decided to follow up with, with all of this. Interestingly enough, he has one more event today. It's a private event. He is to meet with fellow clergy in the area. Uh, he is a Christian minister, if, if you did not know that. He's going to be meeting with some other clergy in the area for a luncheon today, but that is a, that is a private function, a discussion of really how churches in this area can respond to the uh, upcoming unbridled immigration of Syrian Islamic refugees to the Magic Valley. He had another private event scheduled yesterday, 
yesterday afternoon. And this was to host, and I, I, I don't have the actual names of who was invited, but 13 localities, that would be the city of Twin Falls and a dozen other local towns, and representatives from four counties were invited to attend this event. So essentially 17 different governments, and who knows how many people that would in- include, if you count all of the numbers of council members and, and various county commissioners, you could be looking 50 to 80 people. Do you know how many showed up? Because you would think that if you're a government official and there is this level of public interest in this matter, as a government official, you would respond to your constituents, you would, you would come out and pay this man a visit. And they would likely, from what I understand, they may have been planning to feed you as well. You know how many actually showed up? Nada, zilch, zero. Your elected officials decided to stay away in droves. Now, I will qualify that. At last night's event, there were a handful. I think there were three people who were either seeking elective office or in elective office who were among the hundreds who showed up at the East Side Southern Baptist Church. Also, Steve Millington was there out of curiosity. I had been talking about this with him yesterday morning off air. And uh, he dropped by to hear the event last night, too. And he is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. And I think it's good that people hear what this man has to say, whether you agree with him or not. But I am absolutely stunned by the response from most people in government. Where are you? If you have in excess of 500 people who show up for this event, others who say they would have gone, but they just it fell through the cracks and they didn't hear about it, and other people who may have had other Monday or Tuesday night obligations, family obligations and the like, here's the question. Do you think that they perhaps represent a much wider swath of the Magic Valley? And my guess is the people who are attending these meetings are those people who never miss an election day. You have a lot of people, well, you know, I got busy and the kid had a cold and then things got hectic at work and then I just didn't feel well myself, so... I didn't vote today. My guess is the people that who were who were at this event last night and the night before are the people who are very much the ones who turn out. These are the people who are very much interested in politics and culture and what happens in their communities. Is there a warning in that for elected officials, elected politicians, I should say? I would think they can glean from that whatever they will, but it would seem to me you don't want to dismiss this. That's a good way to put it. You don't want to dismiss this. And they're trying to do a very good job of that. So who has you by the short hairs? I had a comment from a woman last night who has been a keen observer politically and dealt with governments for many, many years. And she says, well, look, a great many of these local governments are essentially bribed with federal money to accept this this refugee resettlement program. Bribe might be a, a word they wouldn't use, but we're talking semantics. You know, uh, we're just you know one word or the other. It, it 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 could still be, I think, defined by many people as a bribe. So it buys silence or consent, and silence does mean consent in a legal legal aspect, an old common law aspect. So you've got that going on. But number two, she said, you should find out how many of these elected politicians have family members who are actually drawing a paycheck from some of these programs, who are affiliated with some of these programs in one sense or another. And I think if you follow the money, you'll start to put it all together. It would be interesting if people would start showing up at these public meetings of these other governments, your town boards, your city council, your county commissioners, and to start asking them these questions. And maybe you could do a little bit of what they call FOIA research. I know people out there drag their feet on that. You know, we all talk and hear about uh, government being uh, filled with servants, public servants. But by golly, when you actually want to know anything that's going on, uh, they don't think the public can be trusted. On election day, they'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Oh, I love the people. I'll do anything for them. And if you show up the Wednesday after election day and say, I'd like to look at some records that legally I can't, Well, uh, do you have your fee with you, you know, because it's going to cost us a couple of hundred dollars to uh, to actually Xerox three or four pages for you. They've always got some excuse like that 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 they throw out to try to stall and to obfuscate. 
well, we've got to start holding their feet to the fire. Another thing, Pastor Hadian, in his remarks last night, he made an interesting comment at one point. He was talking about an interview he had with a, with a newspaper reporter. I assume it was one of the local goons. And the reporter, apparently in his remarks on Monday night, he had said he did not believe the President of the United States was a Christian. And the reporter, instead of saying, well, why don't you believe the President is a Christian? The reporter said, of course he's a Christian. And why would you say otherwise? Well, how does the reporter know that? We do know that for a time, Mr. Obama claimed anyway that he was a member of a Marxist-Leninist organization posing as a church in Chicago, Illinois, run by the Reverend Jeremiah Wright. We know that. He was there for 20 years, and then he claims he never heard some of the racist, uh, the racist rants that his pastor was uh, delivering every Sunday. So maybe he actually wasn't there every Sunday, or he was just going for show and then napping during the course of these, uh, these Communist Party meetings that were disguised or gussied up as church services. Since he's become president, he rarely ever attends church. Oh, they do a good show every now and then. The limousine will take him on I-95, and they'll follow up traffic for hours, and they'll race out to somewhere in suburban Virginia. For being a man of the people, he rarely ever shows up at an inner-city church. But he'll, he'll be taken out to northern Virginia, and they'll show up at a church, and then what he'll do on another day is they'll tie up I-95 again, and they'll race him up to Baltimore, 38 miles, and he'll attend a church there somewhere in the city or in the suburbs. As it, as it happens, I know a pastor in Baltimore by the name of McCoy, who pastors one of the largest black churches in that city. He's also a conservative. The president of the United States has never been to McCoy's church because McCoy was opposed to allowing same-sex marriage in his state of Maryland. So the president, of course, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't in any way be associated with this fellow. But I'm telling you right now, the reporters who are asking these questions, clearly, and, and, and as Pastor Hadian said, you know, we're going to know them by their fruits. And he said, in this case, this one is rotten. Now, I'm sure the reporter wouldn't know what that reference was to. Anyway, I mean, the reporter probably has been to a church a few times for a wedding or a funeral. Uh, but other than that, they stayed home on Saturday morning so they could watch cartoons and just, you know, sleep in late. Or Sunday mornings, rather. Did I say Saturday? Well, it could be, you know, that they could have been going to a Seventh-day Adventist church, but they weren't. It's 819. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio 1310.com. Pastor Hadian is, is controversial. He said last night that Islam is not a religion. He also said that the uh, Islam promises the only way you can get to heaven is through martyrdom, which he said is entirely unlike Christianity and not compatible with Christianity where God died for us, if you're a Christian, to absolve you. And in Islam, you're supposed to go out there and create some mayhem, get killed, and then you can go to heaven. It was a fascinating, fascinating presentation. And again, very few people in government decided that they should hear it. Who, who by the way, has them by the short hairs? That's a question for all of us. 52, we've got more on this subject straight ahead. I'm curious to know if you were at the presentation last night, what your thoughts are. You can reach us at 736-0300. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. 52 coming up on 824. Remember, in just a few minutes, a Dr. Jonathan Tripp, and he may bring some associates along with him. We'll have some medical professionals or professional in the studio with us today. Tripp Family Medicine joins us on Wednesday mornings between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. They have a great slogan, life's too short not to feel good. And the office, of course, specializes in family practice. It's not an assembly line like you would find in some other locations. Uh, in fact, they have a very, what I would call, a great bedside manner. I've been there on a number of occasions, and I've seen how they operate, and it's a very personal relationship. You can call the doctor or associates in the next half hour if you have a medical question that you'd like to pass by them. And remember, uh, we do this every Wednesday morning between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Trip Family Medicine is located on Fillmore Street in Twin Falls, directly across the street from the main post office. We have a caller joining us. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Yeah, good morning, Bill. I think the take-home message immediately is that the tremendous security risk, there's no vetting, no security uh, clearance, because most of these people from Syria have no records and they you know, our House committee and Congress has said this, the FBI has said this, 
And so we need to get on to our elected officials, our sheriffs, our police departments, and point out this tremendous security risk to our safety from a possible jihad situation. And plus the what's been brought out is the Internet um, recruiting now with ISIS seems to be uh, picking up speed where another one was uh, picked up again this uh, yesterday um, was going to plant a bomb on the, a crowded beach uh, full of nails and so forth. So that's the, that's the immediate thing. The, the second thing, of course, is the cultural jihad is they seem to assimilate until they get control or a, a certain number and then they segregate, and then all of a sudden they they turn on the the people that were formerly their friends, because if you don't convert, they kill. And and and, and Pastor Haiti had made a comment last night. Now he has left Seattle. He was living there, and he has moved to Eastern Washington. But he said the mayor of Seattle has actually created a lending program for home buyers, Muslim home buyers, uh, based on Sharia principles, which is interest free home loans. But if you're not a Muslim, you can't take advantage of the same Sharia home loan. You have to go through the standard. So they're already getting that special treatment, which apparently they demanded, and they must have such a large number now that have emigrated to Seattle uh, that they can actually use that as leverage and get politicians to give them these special breaks. And if you don't think it's not happening here right in Idaho, uh, you might point out what's happening in CUNA, and there's 11,000 uh, Muslims already in the Boise area, and I think we have a, around 2,000 here in the Magic Valley. So it won't take too long before they will segregate into their groups, and then they set up their own little communities within a community, and that's what's happened in Europe. All we have to do is look at Europe, and that's uh, it's like a freight train. We're stuck on a, the railroad crossing, and the freight train's heading at us at full speed. That's what's coming at us. I thank you much for the telephone call, and, and yeah, you've got people on, on in, in local governments who will not even show up for one of these events. They must know that. But the short-term the short term gain, that is dollar signs, ka-ching, ka-ching, seems to be influencing this. As he was mentioning, a fellow was arrested yesterday for plotting a terror attack on a beach. Uh, this comes from the Daily Caller today, Georgia man sentenced to 15 years for attempting to help ISIS. And he says he got radicalized while he was in prison. Now he gets to go back for another 15 years and become even more radicalized. Can you imagine that, getting special bank loans for home, your home without an interest rate? But you have to be a Muslim in order to do that. Now, Pastor Hadian, and this is where your newspaper elites, where they're just blowing smoke, when they complain and say it's mean-spirited, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to, to, to make these claims. Again, he is a convert to Christianity from Islam. He grew up in an Islamic family in Iran. His family had to flee after the mad mullahs took over from the Shah because they were on a death, uh, death list because his father had been a military officer under the old regime. He converted to Christianity in 1999. Then he decided to enter the ministry. So right away he knows far more about both Islam and Christianity than any wet-behind-the-ears newspaper editor working at a third-rate you know, uh, one-horse newspaper. And that's, that's the point that we have to remember. He has some expertise beyond what the rest of us have in this matter. And to ignore that, it, it, you want to talk about being closed-minded, they, they, they claim that we are, but to ignore what he's saying is, 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 is just, well, it, it's hypocritical. But number two, it's dangerous. And it's a dang shame that these people, because they'll send a reporter out, but where were the editorial staffs of these newspapers? Maybe they need to hear it as well. Well, I'm sure it wouldn't go anywhere with them. You know, liberalism means you put on the blinders. You don't want to hear anything or see anything that, that might actually interfere with uh, your set worldview. Because after all, when we, we're done destroying the country, think about all of the other wonderful things we can then set up. Bill Colley with you. Coming up. Better Health with Trip Family Medicine on Top Story. It's 8.30, 53. On our way back into the 80s today. Brr, it was chilly this morning. Maybe the doctor has a cure for that, too. We'll, we'll have to ask him.